Hey co-friends, it's Pastor Dan Baumgartner here with another midweek update. Wednesday afternoon, beautiful sunny day, and uh, standing here in the backyard, kind of facing the other way, and behind me are the amazing, miraculous tomatoes. Look at those things, they're taller than I am, yellow blossoms all over the place, so probably this summer you're gonna end up with some Baumgartner tomatoes at your house, I can see it. Hey, today I uh, decided to take a little bit of a, a different tack uh, with the update and just think about things a little closer to home. So many huge things going on in the world, in our country that we've been talking about a lot, um, but a little closer to home. So with, with most of the pandemic news being bad news and as it seems to be getting more and more clear that we will have to solidify some new patterns and, and practices for a longer haul than any of us thought, uh, it was just thinking of things that will, will nourish us for this strange time that we're in. And so I thought I would grab Anne and we would share with you three P's. Three, three P's, yeah. Three, three P's. Paying attention, prayer, and a poem. So first, paying attention. Uh, I'm the one always talking about where's God showing up in the everyday. So I think God is absolutely with us in the COVID time, as hard as it is. So how are we going to pay attention in the rest of this time, however long it is, to where God's presence is? So uh, a few short stories. Um, this week I was out at the Cove in the, uh, at the office in the morning and uh, a neighbor from that neighborhood guy came uh, along as he does pretty much every day walking his dog Einstein and uh, we struck up a conversation and we've actually struck up a little friendship, uh, talked probably a couple times a week. Uh, not someone that goes to church, but but Guy uh, noticed our prayer tree project out there with all the yeah, prayers yeah, dangling from the good. branches, and they're, it's looking really great now. And Guy likes that. And he said, hey, I really like uh, the wishes tied up in the trees. And it, at first, I confess, I didn't really like that idea that those were wishes, and I wanted to go, no, they're prayers. Uh, <laughs> but we kind of talked about it, and then after he left, I, I started thinking a little more about it, and I wondered if maybe wishes wasn't as far off as I thought when I first heard it. And in fact, maybe wishes, or, or maybe better put, our longings, when we express longings, they become prayers if we express them to God. Longings expressed are one kind of prayer, and, that, and I sort of like that. Yeah, that's nice. One thing I've noticed, you know, I love the postal mail, and I have a lot of pen pals around the country that I write to, and one friend up in Seattle has been writing me little postcards, and she always puts three gratitudes, things she's thankful for, and she may have other news, but that's always part of it. And I started doing that too, so I started writing that out to some friends and just including a couple things. And then this week I got a letter from a friend, a different friend, and she said, I like that three gratitudes. I'm gonna do that. And she proceeded to tell me three or four things that she was thankful for as a way of organizing. And it was just a, a fun little thing that sort of organically cropped up and sort of reminded amongst very ordinary communication, uh, things we're thankful for. Nice. Yeah. So one more quick story. Uh, I think we told you we take an evening stroll around the neighborhood pretty much every night now. And we're finding that there's some other people doing the same thing. Uh, there's one family, a uh, young couple, Bikram and Bindu. Uh, they have two small kids. Uh, and we are just slowly, very slowly getting to know them as we meet them out in the evenings. They live uh, down the street around the corner. And if it hadn't been for this virus time, we probably wouldn't have met them. So so the common thread to all of these is that, that none of these encounters, which in retrospect seem like God moments, was actually expected. We didn't plan them. They just sort of happened. So paying attention in the ordinary every day. We have a devotional from our friend Eugene Peterson, and in this one he is... Um, talking about Moses meeting God at the burning bush. And then here's the prayer he includes at the end of the devotion. I'm gonna read that prayer that he wrote. I am always try trying to manufacture the right atmosphere for meeting you, holy God. Preparing the right setting, getting into the right mood. And then I'm surprised by your presence in the place I least expect it, at a most unlikely time. Create holy ground under my feet today. Amen. Mm. Nice. So 
paying attention and a prayer uh, and then a poem. Ooh. So William Stafford was, uh, among other things, the poet laureate of the state of Oregon. He taught for years and years at Lewis and Clark College in Portland. He wrote thousands of poems. Uh, and one reason that he wrote so many is that he had this very unusual practice where he would wake up in the morning and first thing every morning he would sit down and write at least one poem uh, every morning including his final day on earth in 1993 woke up in the morning wrote down a poem passed away later in the day most of them are pretty short poems and and many flow out of his own uh, faith that was influenced by the Quakers and I want to just read you one short poem uh, it's called The Way It Is. There's a thread you follow. It goes among things that change, but it doesn't change. People wonder about what you are pursuing. You have to explain about the thread. But it's hard for others to see. While you hold it, you can't get lost. Tragedies happen. People get hurt or die, and you suffer and get old. Nothing you can do can stop times unfolding. You don't ever let go of the thread. I think that thread for me is God, uh, unchanging, always present. Things happen, but whatever else comes, we hang on to the thread. So, it's a good word for us, I think. Uh, things are happening, change is everywhere. Might even talk about that next week, change, because a lot of us are feeling kind of adrift and, and confused, maybe even depressed. But we're gonna hold on to that thread. We're gonna hold on to the God made known in Jesus Christ. And while we hold on to him, uh, like the poem said, we can't get lost. So that's all for this Wednesday. <laughs> Great, great to see you, and God bless you, yes, God bless. and we'll see you soon.